Hey everyone and welcome back. Before we begin here today, please make sure that you like and subscribe because it really does help out our channel and it also helps us reach others who want to test their math skills with these types of test questions. So this will be our 47th part in this particular series. And what we have going on here is that we have to find the green air or the area of the green region shown inside of this square. So we're given a lot of information here. We're told that A, B, C, D is in fact a square. The distance from a to B is six millimeters, and it's also shown that A to D is six millimeters. Since it's a square, it should be equal on all sides. <clears throat> we are also told that H, E, F, this point from H, E to F is a semicircle. If we were to draw a straight line from H to F, that would be our semicircle. And then we have G, D, H here in this left corner, top left corner, and we have C, F, G in this top right corner are both quarter circles with our centers being at D and C. And we also have this circle right here, this full circle with center O, and we are told that the center of this circle O aligns vertically with points G and E. We are also shown that our quarter circles are in fact each three millimeters in radius. So we have to determine the green area here. So in order to do this, well, one possible way to do this, because what I'm going to show is just one pathway to get to the green area. It is not necessarily the only one. It's not, not necessarily the fastest either. It's just one possible method that you could use. So what I'm going to do is to get the green area here, which is shown on the right figure here, I'm going to have to determine my entire yellow area and then I'm going to subtract out my red quarter circle, my blue quarter circle, and then my orange full circle areas here. So yellow, so green area will just be essentially my yellow minus my red minus my blue, and then minusing off my orange areas here. Now, based upon the dimensions that are given, all the information that is given, we can go ahead and as is, we could determine our yellow area, we could determine our red area, and we can determine our blue area as is without really doing any hard calculations. The difficulty lies, and it's not super difficult either, but the difficulty lies in getting our orange area because we need to determine the radius or diameter of our orange circle in order to get that area. Everything else with the yellow, the red, and the blue, we could get right away because we are shown our overall dimensions here for those areas. So let's work on getting the radius for the orange circle O. Once we have that, then we'll calculate our actual areas for yellow, red, blue, and orange to get our final green. So scrolling down here, taking all the colors off, I'm going to have to get my overall radius here. So I am told that G O and E all align vertically, so it's going to be a straight line. This distance here will be R for my radius, and this distance from my center to E will also be my radius. What else am I going to do here? I'm going to do this. I'm going to draw a straight line from C to O, and this will also be my radius here. And given that I um, my quarter circle from C to G from the center to the edge is three millimeters. That means that this right here is also three millimeters if I were to draw from C to the edge of that circle. All right. So how does this help me drawing this all out? Well, if I were to call this point P right here, this intersection of my main circle O between the lines G and O here, this would be true. P to G would be equal to EG, which is my full length all the way across, subtracting off OP, subtracting off OE, basically just subtracting out two, my, two of my radius here. So essentially this would be six millimeters minus off two times my radius would give me PG here. Okay, well, how does that help us out here? Well, looking at what we have here, let's look at the right triangle right here because this is a right angle forming here if we were to draw a straight line vertically. Using the Pythagorean theorem, we would have this of OC, which is my hypotenuse side squared, would be equal to GO squared plus GC squared. <clears throat> Alrighty, so moving on here, let's fill in what we have. We have O to C, so we would have three millimeters plus r squared 
is equal to g to o, well, g to o is going to be consisting of pg here with my r. So we would just have to combine those to get that. And once you combine pg with the r here, instead of subtracting off 2r, you are just subtracting off r. So you could necessarily just skip this step if you wanted to and just do it mathematically in your head. But that shows where this go comes from, which will just be 6 minus off r squared and then plus gc which gc is my top portion here and it's denoted as three millimeters so squaring that as well so filling out the squares here we would have nine plus six r plus r square on the left side and then on the right side we would have 36 minus off 12 r plus r squared plus nine and then simplifying down here this becomes 18 r is equal to 36. So then my radius for my orange circle pops out to be two millimeters. Okay, so now with my radius of my orange circle O known, I can come back and then I can determine all my areas, keeping in mind that the areas are this as shown up here. So in order to get my yellow area, what I'm going to do is just draw a straight line across here from H to F, since that is a semicircle here. And knowing that the quarter circles here um, from DHG and CGF, they are three millimeters in radius. So this would also be three millimeters here. And this would also be three millimeters over here as well from D to H, if that were a straight line right there. So I would just take the area of this rectangle portion, which is six by three. And then I would take the area of my semicircle here and that would be my total yellow. So let's do that real quick. So my yellow would be this. It would be three millimeters times six millimeters, and then adding in with pi times my r squared here, which will be three millimeters squared over two. And the reason why the radius is three millimeters, well, because once again, we are a square, we're three mil millimeters here. So this distance right here would also be three millimeters once again. So my total area for my yellow portion would just be 18 plus. 4.5 pi millimeters squared if we want to keep it exact. And then the red and blues, as I said, we could have gotten right away. They're both going to be equal to one another because they both are quarter circles with radius of three millimeters. So I'm just going to write it like this, where red is equal to blue, which is just equal to pi times my radius squared over four, since it is a quarter circle, is equal to 2.25 pi millimeters squared. All right, so the last area that we have to calculate before calculating the green is the area of the orange circle, which we do have the radius for that, which was two millimeters. So my orange will just be pi r squared. So it is pi times two squared, which is four pi millimeters squared. Okay, so now that we have all our individual areas, we can go ahead and we can calculate our main that we are looking for, which is our green area, which will be equal to the yellow, which is 18 plus 4.5 pi. Oh, not that many vertical sticks in pi there. And then subtracting off our red and our blue, which will just be two times 2.25 pi, because well, 2.25 for each of those, there are two of them, so multiplying by two there and then subtracting off our orange area, which is four pi. And this will give us an exact area of 18 minus four pi millimeters squared. Or if you wanted to round it off to an actual realistic number that people use in real life would be 5.434 millimeters squared. And those are your answers. And that's how you would find the green area within the square shown right here. So I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope you learned a new math skill along the way. And if you wanna test your abilities even further, please check out the other videos on our channel. Also, if you haven't done so already, please like this video, leave a positive comment below and subscribe to the channel because all of that does help us out. Thank you for watching and I hope you have a fantastic day.